My biggest, biggest criticism, it said that R. Gordon Wasson convinced Maria Sabina to share the medicine. That was a total lie. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Hey y'all, it's Chrysantilis, and today we are talking about my channel special. You know them, you love them, Magic Mushrooms. Netflix just dropped its newest series, How to Change Your Mind. It is based on the book that I recommend on this channel a lot, which is How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. And today's video is going to be very chill, very low key. I was not planning on filming these, but I got enough folks asking for my opinion on it. So here we are. It's gonna be less hyper edited. Like I said, my name is Chrysantilis, and if you're new here, welcome. We are a realm dedicated to psychedelics and sacred plant medicine, all about demystifying and destigmatizing the trip. If you get something out of this video today, please subscribe to my channel. And you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Patreon at Chrysantilis. My question for you is have you seen the Mushrooms episode of How to Change Your Mind on Netflix? If so, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The following video is made for the purpose of education and harm reduction. We are not promoting the use, procurement, or possession of any plant medicine or substance. We encourage everyone to do further research and prioritize safety. So I'm just gonna be reading from my computer just like some notes that I took while I was watching this. Again, very low key today. Very, very low key. Thank you for sticking it out with me. So they start out the episode with the relationship between psychedelics and death. When Symposi was more active in Baltimore, I went to a talk presentation that they hosted that was just called Psychedelics and Death. And it was all about the relationship between psychedelics and death. And it was incredible. It, it was one of the things, I, I did this when I was in college, it was one of the things that really piqued my interest in just psychedelics as a whole and theory and the shared human experience of journeying throughout time. So I think about this relationship a lot. Also, just a shout out to my home state. There is so much cool research that has been going on and that is going on in Maryland. Shout out to Marilyn. It's also fascinating that so much of this episode focused on cancer patients, which I think is one of the deepest applications of this medicine in terms of using it in a really serious way. On the festival trip to end of life trip spectrum, but I also think that portraying it in such a diverse way is helpful for understanding the real power that this medicine holds, right? It holds the power to make an outdoor concert more enjoyable. You can connect with the trees moving all around, you have a beautiful time, but it also holds the power to connect with your mortality and understand and integrate the other side of living into your life. I appreciate the constant reminders of the war on drugs throughout the series and just how much that sucked overall in general. Like what a dark age. And I wrote this down, thank Gaia for the focus on the Mazatec people and Oaxaca, Mexico. Maria Sabina often gets left out of the conversation. Out of all of the like magic mushroom YouTubers that I frequent and I love, I don't know that I've heard her name uttered in acceptable amount or even at all that I can think of. Her name is super important if we want to understand the roots of this medicine and the lineage of this medicine and her story is just so undertold. I, I've seen entire videos on YouTube that will be like the history of magic mushrooms and it will not mention her name once. I think it was so beautiful to hear her voice if you haven't yet, please look up her writings and her poetry. She was and is an incredible voice and mind. What she did for accessibility of the medicine, even if she didn't necessarily choose to do that, can never be repaid in my personal opinion especially in regards to what she had to go through in her lifetime. My biggest, biggest, biggest criticism of this episode is that it said that R. Gordon Wasson convinced Maria Sabina to share the medicine with him. And that is really not my understanding 
of the story. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. I do believe that he lied to her in order to gain access to the medicine. And to me, that's not quite the same as convincing. And I think that to leave this part out is to do a disservice to that legacy. It's my understanding that the story went like, he saw her, he wanted to document it, all that kind of stuff and have this experience. He was working with another woman beforehand, but he really wanted to work with her. And he told her that he had a situation in his life that he was worried about his son back home and wanted information about his whereabouts and well-being. That was a total lie. And if he did not tell that lie, he would not have gained access to the mushrooms. And retrospectively, she said that she felt many red flags with this person and that she felt like she might be being lied to. He also promised her anonymity. He promised her that she wouldn't face consequences for sharing this with him, all this kind of stuff that obviously that did not happen. So I really feel like this series presented this story and this dynamic through very like rose colored glasses. Fuck our Gordon Lawson. There should have been a little bit of that sprinkled it like fuck this dude and because there wasn't that sprinkled in i feel like people might just watch this and view it in kind of a neutral way right because they mentioned that like oh later in her life she came to kind of like regret it all that. no she regretted that shit right away as soon as he published that article featuring her that he promised he wouldn't do that and he made all these promises to gain access to her consent and ceremony and then completely retroactively just decimated it. It makes me wonder what the incentive is to not tell the whole story on his end. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Because me, on my channel, right here, you know I keep it real. You know I keep it very real about the history. Mm, oh my god, stop fucking lying. And when we don't keep it real about the history, when we kind of try to present things a little bit better than they were, that's basically propaganda at that point. Yeah, these stories are complex, but if we are not putting an emphasis on how the most marginalized folks involved were further marginalized, I mean, I'm not trying to paint this picture as being just like so pretty and oh my God, he lied to her. I can't imagine someone lying to me, it ruining my life, causing the death of my family members, which they also don't really talk about. But I believe Maria Sabina's son was murdered and losing the safety of my entire life. And then history rewrites it as I willingly. Anyways, that ish is effed. That ish is effed. Let's talk about a white man that I do fucks with. Paul Stamets. Fucking love you, Paul Stamets. Thank you for your peanut butter. Peter Pan. And if you're not in my immediate family, you're not gonna have any idea what I'm referencing, but basically Paul Stamets, thank you for your products. Thank you for the research that you've done. Thank you for the stories that you have told. And you'll see this in my microdose series, but I love host defense. I love the Stamets 7 mushroom blend. I use that to stack my microdoses. So yes, Mr. Stamets, so much more than his products, but thank you for your peanut butter, Peter Pan. So much wisdom. Also, like, how did I not know that Paul Stamets hat was a mushroom? Why didn't I just assume that? You know, I feel, I feel a bit ignorant for that. Let's talk about 30% of people say that their experience with mushrooms in the study was the most spiritually significant experience of their life. I think that's a really important piece of this episode to bring attention to. People who watch this video, they're like, why is she so obsessed with magic mushrooms? Why, what's her deal? Like, what's going on? Yeah spiritually significant one of it's definitely in my top three probably i'd say number one is just like psychedelics in general but yeah 30 percent of people said that this is the most spiritually significant experience of their life you know some of those people had kids you know some of those people had kids yo i'm not gonna touch that but um the guy who cured his OCD. I thought that that story was really incredible. It left me teary eyed. I don't mean to just like gloss over these, but the episode had literally so much. His ability to just use like the mindfulness technique of noting and being like, oh, noted. Moving on, like that is incredible. 
And I love that it ends on a note of decriminalizing use and a vision for the future. So yes, let's decriminalize the plants. Let's decriminalize nature. I agree with all of that. I, I think a lot of people don't even know how illegal mushrooms are. Like a lot of folks don't even know that they're a schedule one substance, which in certain states carries a mandatory minimum. But yeah, I really love the amount that the series featured folks who are doing that work. I think that is super important. And this is gonna be my last little note here, but I love Bach. I have since I was a child. I'm easily a Bach fan, but I just have to say that the psychedelic playlists that they put out for these research studies are way too European classic heavy, okay? Please y'all start mixing some other things in there. I don't understand. And at this time, I am going to do some shameless self-promotion and plug my two psychedelic playlists. Y'all know I have my mellow playlist and I have my upbeat playlist. I will link those in the description. Please be sure to check that out. I also made two videos about them on this channel. But yes, y'all, if you go to the Johns Hopkins playlist for psychedelic research, it is dope and has some bops and some hits, but Honestly, I'd say it's mostly skips because why are you making folks listen to only classical European music while they are journeying on this sacred indigenous plant medicine? It's pretty far away from Icaros, you know, which Icaros is indigenous healing ceremony music. It has more to do with the roots of this medicine than just like the Bach, back to back Bach and Beethoven. Okay, that is like my one piece of criticism and it makes sense because like you see who's doing the studies You see who's doing the studies. Okay, but at the end of the day I feel like being forced to listen to classical music could create a more challenging Journey than was needed because I don't typically only listen to that kind of music So I wouldn't choose to only listen to that kind of music for like three-fourths of a psychedelic journey. No, thank you but maybe that's what they're trying to do. Maybe they're trying to make it a little bit more challenging for folks and in that regards, I don't think that's what they're trying to do. I will say this, similar to the criticism from the first video I made about LSD, this series really only presents the like best case scenarios with mushroom experiences, psychedelic dosing journeying. It doesn't really cover anybody who had a truly, really extremely challenging trip that went on to affect them in real life in any negative way, which I don't tend to focus my videos on that either. But I think it's important that we recognize and speak about the fact that challenging things can occur and do occur for certain people while striking the balance of not fear mongering. Because if we give folks watching this Netflix show the expectation that everything's gonna be great and their depression's gonna be cured and there's no chance they'll have a challenging trip. There are gonna be a lot of folks going out there a lot more bold who are listening to that portion of the show and completely not listening to the portion of the show that talks about set and setting and nailing your trip prep and all that kind of stuff. So that's just like a note that I've seen other people talk about. But anyways, if you dug this video, please don't forget to subscribe. We are working our way to 5,000 subs. And I also have merch on my Threadless shop. It looks like this. I also recently soft launched my Patreon. Please check it out. That's all I'm asking is to check it out. I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Chrysantilis. So thanks for hanging out and chatting a bit about mushrooms. Don't forget to keep it trippy.